second part. Today we're going to go through section 4.2. This is the second part of section 4.2, the multiplication rule. So um, we're going to continue on with this section. It's a long section. So this one's going to be a little bit different than the addition rule. So as you recall, for the addition rule, the key word for the addition rule was the word or. For the multiplication rule, the key term going to be the word and. So notation wise, it's the probability of A and B is equal to the events A occurred in the first trial and events occur in the second trial. So that's that's the definition of, of the multiplication rule. So just like the addition rule, the multiplication rule has two formulas. So I'll go through those two formulas in a little bit and I'll give you some examples. But it all comes down to the term two terms. So the two terms that we have to go through are the terms independent and dependent, right? So two events, A and B, are considered to be independent. If one depends or does not depend on the other to occur, they're not in, it's kind of like, like maybe some of y'all, are y'all independent from your parents? You don't rely on them, you, you're on your own. That's considered to be independent. Maybe, uh, let's say your car, your car turning on, does that depend on your watch? No, they are two different entities that are independent from each other. One does not rely on the other. That's what independent is. Whereas dependent is one, one outcome. The first outcome depends on the next outcome to occur. So maybe some of you are dependent on your clock to wake you up in the morning. Are you dependent on that? Probably so, right? So if you're, you are dependent on your clock, then that means that those two events, your clock and you getting up, are dependent. Right? Because that will determine which formula you're going to use. So let me put it on the screen, the two formulas. So, all right, so this one, Formula number one. So let me let me put the keyword. So the keyword for multiplication is going to be the word and. Don't forget the word and is the keyword for the multiplication rule. All right. So the first formula goes like this: probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. These two, this formula is for the independent events. Independent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it something different in a little bit. Okay. And then the other formula, the other formula is going to be probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And then it's a line. It's not divide. It's a line. I'll tell you what the line is later. Not now, but I will describe this line later. It's not divide. It's just a line, a dividing line. This one we use when events are dependent on each other. Okay, dependent. All right, so those are the formulas. Okay, all right, so, um, so let's do an example, all right? So for example, how many of you all know how to play the lottery? All right, so for the lottery, let's let's just take, for example, let's just do, let's do uh, the game called Powerball. All right, as an example, Powerball. 
and I'm going to show you the odds of playing the, the lottery. It's, it's outrageous, but hey, going to pay for education, right? Powerball, all right? So for Powerball, um, you have to pick numbers. And let me see the rules. The rules for Powerball go, you have to pick, you have to pick uh, five numbers. All right. I'm looking it up. Power ball. All right. I don't know why I keep getting all these these uh these ads in my phone. Well, I want the rule. So yeah, I had it. All right. So you have to pick five numbers. Choose five numbers and the range is from one through 69 and then you got to pick the powerball choose one powerball from one through 26 All right, so that's how you play it. So let's figure out the odds of playing winning in Powerball. I want to, I want to win. I want to win the jackpot. That's that's all we worry about, right? You can win, you can win other other prizes, but we're just concentrating on on winning the the, the big jackpot, right? All right. So you have your five numbers: one, two, three, four, five, and then you have your Powerball. So, how many choices do I have to, can I pick for the first ball? Well, I have one, two, three, 69. So I have, I have 69 choices to choose from, right? Those are your choices, 69. But then when you choose the second one, you cannot pick the same number. It's got to be a different number than your first choice. So that decreases it to the next ball you have. 68 choices. And the third one, you can't pick the same two, so you have to pick a different one. So you have 67. And it decreases each time that you choose a ball. So notice that the numbers start to decrease because the number of choices, you cannot pick the same number. This is called without replacement. Without replacement, we, we we cannot choose the same number, so we we can't we can't replace it. Okay, now this one, now this is totally independent from these, so I have twenty six choices to choose. All right, so if I want to figure out and calculate the probability of me winning the jackpot for the Powerball, all you have to do is multiply all three, all, like all six numbers, and that'll tell me the odds of winning. So let's multiply it. So we're gonna multiply 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 times 65 times 26. And that'll tell me the odds of how many, in other words, this number is gonna give me how many different Choices or how many different combination of sets of six numbers can be generated from this game. So if I multiply 69 times 68 times 67 times 66, 4 times 65, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 26, ooh, I got a huge number 3.506. Four one six zero oh, five six times ten to the tenth. All right. So what does that mean? Times ten to the tenth. I got to move my decimal ten spaces to the right. So let's see. One two three four five six. One two three four five ten. 
So there are 35 billion, 64 million, 160,000, 560 different tickets that can be generated from this game. And how many are winners? One. So you have a one in 35 billion to win the game of Powerball. Okay. So those are the odds of winning is that it's astronomical. Right. So notice that the numbers are decreasing. This is without replacement. We can't we have we cannot we cannot replace them. Right? They're they're different. So the numbers decrease, we call that without replacement. All right, now let's look at another another game called uh, pick three. All right now, pick three is probably the best bet to go with to gamble if you want to play number. So for pick three, right, you have three bolts and you get to choose, choose three numbers and it ranges from zero Sorry, zero through nine. You can choose zero through nine numbers from zero through nine. However, these can repeat. We can have duplicates. We can have one, 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 or five, 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 four, four, four. They can repeat. We call that with replacement. Okay, so. How many choices do I have to choose for the first ball? Well, the numbers range from zero to nine. So that's 10, you have 10 choices. Yes, so it's zero, one, we're counting zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go, there's your 10, up to nine. And you can repeat it. So these numbers can repeat. We call that with replacement. So if I multiply, 10 times 10 times 10, that's a thousand. You have a thousand to one to win. Of course, the jackpot is not that high, but hey, you got a one, one in 1,000 to win. So this is called replacement. Notice that the numbers, they're the same. That's with replacement, okay? Another example, let's do, uh, license plates. Okay, so in the past, our license plates used to be for cars. It used to be first three were alphas and the last three were numerical digits. So how many license plates could be made back in the past? Well, let's see. Well, if these were letters, characters and letters, and these were numbers, right? How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. So I can have the same letter. I can have N, 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 right? So 26, 26, 26. Right, and then numbers. Well, you got zero through nine again. So you have 10, 10, 10. Notice that these can repeat. This is with without replacement. Without replacement. Okay. Now multiply them. Multiply them. And what do we get? What do we get when we multiply 26 times 26 times 10 times 10? All right, let's see. Tell me what you get when you multiply. Multiply those numbers and tell me what you get.
we get oh we get something without my count there it is i couldn't find my calculator One seven five seven six zero oh, zero. Oh, oh. That is seventeen million five hundred seventy six thousand license plates. All right, so that was the past. Now it's changed. Now on cars, I believe the first two are letters. I don't remember. How does it go? Yeah, I think the, I think it's seven. First three are letters, and the last four are numbers. Yeah. So it goes letters, numbers. They they add an extra. They added an extra um, number because the state of Texas bloom thanks to your parents, right? So if I multiply 26 times 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, we got add an extra zero, one, seven, five, seven, six, one, two, three, four. So now there is 175 million 760,000 different license plates that can be generated, right? So remember, this is this is uh, with replacement, right? The numbers are the same. The values are the same. These are with replacement, okay? Now, now that you know the difference between with replacement and without, without replacement, the numbers decrease, with replacement, the numbers stay the same. Now we can go back and attach the terms to it. So independent means that it is with replacement and dependent means without replacement. without all right so we're going to do an example we're going to do i'm going to draw a bag i'm going to put some marbles in the bag and we're going to practice <clears throat> so here's my bag it's supposed to be a bag it's supposed to be a bag i was going to put it in my HD bag and I'm going to put I'm going to put a uh, four red marbles three green two purple well, I ran out of the one oh, I do have and one blue one blue uh, one blue marble. This is supposed to be this is supposed to be purple. And it looks like blue, right? These are purple and that's blue. Right? And I want to find the probability of getting a red marble and a green one. But it's there's two ways of doing it. We can do with replacement and without replacement. And I'm gonna do another one. Probability of red and green. And I want you to see the pattern. 
this is without. This is another way of knowing that you guys are going to be using the multiplication rule when you guys see these words with replacement without replacement. Okay, now let's do with replacement. Okay, so these two events are independent. Right, so what's the probability of me picking red? What's, what's, what's the total number of marbles? Well, first of all, let's, let's figure out the total. What's the total? How many marbles do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 10. I have 10 marbles. And I want to find the probability of red. So I want to do probability. Of red. Times. The probability of green. So probability red is I have four, so that's four divided by 10, right? Times green, three, three divided by 10. They are independent. So we multiply them. 12 over 100, which is 0.12, that is 12%. Think. Four divided by 10. Three divided by 10. Yep. Now, when we do red and green without replacement, this is going to be different. Okay, so let me, let me write down the formula. Probability of A times the probability of B line A. Okay, I'm gonna describe, I'm gonna tell you what that line is. Remember, it does not mean divide. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing like we did before, right? We're doing, we're gonna do the probability of red times the probability of green line red. Ah, line red. Okay, now, so probability red, same thing, four out of 10, same thing, four out of 10, okay? But when we do the second part, this part, I wanna find the probability of picking a green one this line means given that you removed one of the reds that you chose from the beginning, whatever you chose at the beginning, that's what you have to remove from our list. So I'm gonna take one off. So now what's the probability of getting a green marble? Well, it's three, three still, but out of how many? Now we took one red out, it's three out of nine. So we had to remove a marble, so that decreases our total. Notice the previous one, 10, 10. When we do without replacement, one gets deducted. So that gives us 12 over 90, which is, uh, what is 12 over 90? Point one three three or thirteen point three percent right so the denominator stay the same this one decreases because you're taking one out that's what that little line means you're taking your take when you choose the second event you're removing the 
the initial marble that you started with at the very beginning, you take one, only one out. And so that'll decrease this total by one. Increases it by one. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Let's do. Let's do. Let's let's try it with uh with three, three colors. But let's pick the same color, and see what happens. Okay. So let's do. Let's do. Let's find the probability. So you can see this. This all is building up to, if you all are interested in counting cards and you want to cheat the system and at the casino gambling places, this is the where they're using the probability. If you're dealing with cards and you want to find the probability of, of a winning hand, these are the concepts that you would use to do that. All right, so let's do probability of red and red and red we'll do this one with replacement and then we'll do the other one without so you can see the pattern and it's amazing what happens when you find the probability of the same type of an event. Okay, and this one is without. I'll show you how it is without. All right, here we go. So let's do with replacement. So remember, because it's with replacement, each of these events are independent. So you're gonna do probability of red, times the probability of red, they're each separate entities. So this would be four out of 10 times four out of 10 times four out of 10. Now you can type in four out of 10 raised to the third if you want, or you can type it in just as nice as it is, right? I did I did four out of 10 raised to the third. So I got point oh sixty four. Point oh sixty four. 0 0.064, or this would be 6.4%. Yep. Okay, now we're going to do the next one, but without replacement. So remember the first initial probability is the same as this one. Let's treat it first. Probability red. All right. But then when you choose the second one, you're going to do the probability of red, given that you're going to take one a one red out. And then you're going to find the probability of red, given that you take another one out. You're taking one red marble out each time you find its probability. That's what the, ah, I ran out of space. Red. There we go. Ah, sorry. It's because I ran out of space. Red. I was going to say red wrong, but that's something else. All right, so. Let's do it. Let's tackle each one individually, right? So, probability red, like over here, it's four tenths, right? But when we do the second one, I want to find the probability of red, but I got to take one out. 
So let's take one out. Now let's find the probability of red because I had to take one out. Now that becomes three out of nine. All right, so that's the second one. Now I'm gonna do the third one. I wanna I wanna find the probability of red if I take another red one out. So I'm gonna take another one out. So what happens when I take another one out? That decreases the number of reds and it also decreases the number of total marbles. So now the probability is now two out of eight. Two out of eight. So notice. Because you're choosing the same color, not only does the denominators decrease by one, but so does the top because you're taking away marbles from that particular color out. Whereas on the other one that we did, with we had the red and green, you're taking you're taking one specific color out, but that does not affect the color or that marble, you're changing, you're picking another different color. So that changes that, but it does change your total. So when you're choosing the same type of marble, not only does the denominator decrease, but the tops also. Hint, hint, hint. So if I multiply four tenths times three ninths, times two eights, I get 0 0.033 or 3.3%. So I want you to, I want you to put a little, a little star on these two. Hint, 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 hint. Hint, hint, because that's probably going to be what you're going to encounter on your homework. All right, so let's go to your homework and let's try, let's try one or two or one or two or one. All right, so this one is about the order accurate and not accurate. Okay, so we're gonna do on the next page, we're gonna do number 15. If two orders are selected, find the probability that they are both accurate. Okay, both accurate. All right, so uh, both accurate. All right, so we got to go to our table, our 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 Punnett square, right? Okay, our Punnett square, and we're doing fifteen. So let's see, fifteen. I want to find the probability. I'm trying to find my table with the accurate and not accurate. I'm trying to find it and see if I can. I have to redo it again. Oh, I found it. Oh. I do have my, oh, but I did write on it. Oh, great. So I think I'm going to have to redo the chart. Well, maybe not. Maybe I can, maybe I can wing it. All right, so let's see if I can, I can tweak it a little bit. I can tweak it a little bit. I'm going to erase, I'm going to erase some of the 97, I got another 97. 97, this was 362, 362. I'm going to get an eraser and I'm going to erase my line. Yeah. 
Got to save the trees. And whatever machine, well, we're wasting a racer. I don't know who, what a racer is made out of, but well, we're making them. Anyways, all right, there's your, there's your, there's your accurate and your accurate. All right, so we're going to use that as our base. All right, so let's go back to the problem. All right, so we're doing 15. 15 said, if two words are selected, find the probability that they are both accurate. So 15 is asking, 15 is asking, find the probability of accurate and accurate. And they want us to do it with replacement and without. With replacement. And then we're going to do the same procedure. That's B, I think. Part B without accurate and accurate. Is it two R's or one R? Oh, one R. To the paid attention in English. All right, one R accurate without replacement. Okay. All right, so let's let me go back over here. And you're gonna use parts of the total. All right, so we're total for these. For you know the independent and independent. Okay, here we go. I am switching over. Okay, here we go. So I want to do with replacement. Accurate and accurate. All right, so I'm gonna do with replacement means that they're independent. Probability of accurate times the probability of accurate. Okay. All right. So I know, I know that my total, just like the marbles, is going to be 1, 11, 18 on both of them. They're going to be the same, right? Because it's with replacement. Actually, they're going to be identical because it's with replacement. So let's get the what is, what is the count of the accurate? The accurate count total is 987. So that means both of them are going to be 987s. So 987s over 1118. Now you can you can type it in as 987 over 1118 squared, or you can just type them in as as is, right? I'll just do it. 987, I'm going to cheat. 1118 squared. All right, I got 0 0.779 or 77.9%. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same problem, but without replacement, which means you remember. What's going to happen to the numerators and the denominators? Oh, that's right. Just like we did with the marbles. Remember the red and the red? Red and red, they're the same. Accurate and accurate are the same, which means that accurate times probability of accurate take away one of the accurates. It's always you take away one always. We take one away, All right? So this is going to be still 987 over 1118. And the next one's going to be just like the marbles, the red ones, what's going to happen to both of them? They're going to decrease by 1. 986 over 1117. And then you, this one, you're going to have to do it. You have to you have to type this one uh, on your own, so you'll have to do it separately, right? Nine eighty seven divided by one 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 eight 
times 986 over 1117. Ah, you get the same answer as before. What a coincidence. Huh. Why is it that we got the same answer? Interesting. What do you think? Now, so again, when it's with a replacement, they're going to be identical. When they are the same and it's without replacement, both the numerator and the denominator decrease by one as the second one comes up. That's how it works. Now, where is this? What is this related to? All right, so I'm gonna give you an example. So uh, several years ago, there was a company by the, by the name of Firestone. They make tires, right? So Firestone got sued because their tires were defective. Same situation that is, that is, that's occurring right now with the heat. You know, the heat really does some, puts wear and tear on the tires and they were exploding at the time on the expressway. And you can see it too. There's several of them that are still around and you'll see shredded tires all over the expressways, right? Well, that's probably a Firestone. So apparently, uh, when they were making the tires, uh, the quality control uh, department figured, you know, what's the purpose of us taking out a defective tire where you're going to get the same results, whether you take one out or you don't? So they figured, well, why even bother? You're going to get the same percentages. So, so the, the, the best thing to do is to what? Do you replace the tire or do you not replace it? Right? So what was happening is they were, they were, you know, they were checking all the tires. They found one that was effective, right? So what did they do? They left it in there, right? And so tire kept passing, kept passing, kept passing. Pass all the inspections, it's out in public, it blew out. What they should have done was they should have done without replacement. When they figured out that there was a defective tire, what should you do? You should take it out, take it out from the batch and take it out from the pool. They should have done this. Instead, they did that. Why? Because when you take one out, you're going to get this probability of defectiveness. It comes up the same as whether you don't take it out. So, you always want to take out whatever the problem is from the pool and not leave it in there is the best thing to do when you're dealing with people. So that's that's how uh, the multiplication rule works. So just follow follow these procedures of these two to do the other problems and you should be good.